This is Twisted Priorities, Episode 2. The spread of a Rhode Island police drug and pedophile protection gang throughout the New England states. In Episode 1, we uncovered a ring of racketeering by Rhode Island ex-cops, protected by police who ignored a special needs teacher pedophile ring. They know how to skip from one state to another to avoid detection. We'll explain state hopping and state records cover-ups in a future episode. For now, we need to take another look, though, at Rhode Island Detective Major Kevin O'Brien, who failed to investigate a special needs child exploitation ring in a Rhode Island public school and church, and who dishonestly helped other police run a racket. Just after episode one was released, in Connecticut was exposed a near-identical ring of men preying on young special needs males, just like the ring we exposed in Rhode Island. They plied the vulnerable victims with controlled substances. Then they used the victims' drug debts to pimp them as slaves across state lines into Massachusetts. And like the Rhode Island gang, they used men's club-like activities to groom the victims. In episode one, we saw the Tedeschi brothers, a pair of special needs teachers who sexually abused male children with a history of hopping the Massachusetts state line to avoid detection. The Tedeschi's were allowed to get away with this by Rhode Island's top sex crime investigator, Detective Major Kevin O'Brien, who knew that Anthony Tedeschi had worked in the diocese clothing altar boys for 37 years, yet somehow managed to fail to warn the diocese, and the public. Detective Major O'Brien worked in the same church as Anthony Tedeschi, as a matter of fact. So we know he knew. In the Connecticut ring, just busted, Bruce Beamer, Robert King, and William Dreziger enslaved schizophrenic and paranoid young men from group homes. Some of the 15 or more victims were taken to dozens of wealthy men, one was taken to Beamer's racetrack and promised car and or helicopter rides, which never materialized. The Connecticut ring and the Rhode Island ring from episode one both preyed on young special needs males and both hopped the Massachusetts state line. The Rhode Island and Connecticut rings are highly similar and both raise issues of the Massachusetts border. Massachusetts is the special needs abuse capital of the United States. It's the worst state for special needs child sexual exploitation. Let's take a tour of recent special needs child sex exploitation in Massachusetts. In July 2015, Massachusetts special needs school IT techie, Eric S. Bean, who distributed child pornography, gets just a 90 day sentence. This case has some red alerts. Just like the Rhode Island case, this special needs school worker worked in Massachusetts, but lived in Rhode Island. He was a child porn distributor as an IT worker. He got an unusually light sentence, 90 days, and lo and behold, he too was arrested by Detective Major Kevin O'Brien, who in episode one is shown to protect special needs pedophiles and engaged in controlled substance racketeering. Eric Bean's sweetheart deal came three months before a church worker's Rhode Island public school attack on a special needs child, an attack O'Brien helped cover up, as seen in episode one. There are more recent cases of special needs child exploitation in Massachusetts, however. This is Benjamin Schwartz. He had been a special needs educator for 10 years in Massachusetts when he was caught distributing child porn. He got no jail time the very same month that IT worker Eric Bean was caught. This is Stephen Orloff. His case is particularly heinous. A real fox in the hen house scenario. He was a special needs teacher at a school for sexually abused girls. He raped his daughter, made videos, and sold them. He also pretended to be a 14-year-old boy in order to trick girls into sending him pictures online. When he was busted, Massachusetts Child Protective Services 
forgot to alert the school for sexually abused girls where he taught. Stephen Orloff committed suicide six months before Ben Schwartz's sweetheart deal. There was a cover-up in Orloff's case, remember. And Massachusetts is no stranger to recent special needs child abuser cover-ups. In the late summer of 2015, Worcester Public School Director Dr. Melissa Boone sought to hide from the media the arrests of two employees, one a special needs bus driver for child pornography. There are still other similar suspicious cases in Massachusetts, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. As a matter of fact, that area has a whole slew of unsolved serial and or mass murders of prostitutes, drug addicts, children, and or other vulnerable persons. Each mark on this map represents not just one murder, but several. Think about that. Special needs child predation is serious and real. These are crimes of opportunity where there's trust, access, and too often, literal victim speechlessness. This British celebrity is believed to have raped hundreds of special needs kids. He also recruited victims for the wealthy. There were cover-ups in his case, just like in this case. He warned us about danger from strangers, but he was the real danger. Not all lawmen are good babysitters either. Some of them help special needs child predators. 